Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Brett Gritzmacher, and I am the, the proud principal of BC. This is my ninth school year. And personally, my wife and I, we have a son who just graduated last year, who's down at the uh, University of Alabama. Roll Tide. Uh, it's kind of fun being able to say that, and it actually is like in context something. But um, I also have a junior son here and an eighth grader at Wisconsin Hills. So. Um, it's exciting to be principal, and it's also exciting to to have my boys or our boys go to go to the school to see everything that they can can do here, all the opportunities that we have at BC, and it's it's special to be the principal and 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 a parent. Uh, just some quick introductions. Uh, Dominic Bauer, where's Dominic? Dominic is uh, one of the associate principals. He's also in charge of L I through Z. I know that gets a little impersonal when we say LI through Z and we'll talk with the counselors, but uh, if you have questions regarding attendance or, or other things, uh, he's, he's the go-to for, for LI through Z, but certainly you can, can talk to any of us. Uh, Carolyn Hahn, I think she is, there, is she, oh, she is in here, A through LE. Um, she's another great resource. And Don Kurth, I believe he's down in, in the gym. He is our activities and athletic director. Uh, but this is this is the the admin team, and you know it says leadership team there. But really, at BC, we really really strive for for teachers to be leaders, uh, for students to be leaders. Because if only four of us were providing leadership at this building, uh, it wouldn't be what it is. So uh, everyone can be a leader. Uh, you don't need a title. Uh, he doesn't have a slide, but uh, over under the clock is our SRO, Officer Tony Cater. Um, this is his second full school year with us. Um, he's been a great resource. He also works with uh, uh, the elementaries and the middle schools on this side of town, and Brook East has, has an SRO as well. So um, we're very, very lucky to have him. Just want to go through some, some real brief things in terms of communication. Uh, when I started being a principal, I thought the more emails I sent, the better, because I was communicating. And then I had a teacher come to me and say, Brett, I can't keep up. I mean, you're sending like three a day. What do you want us to do? Um, so I've pared it down, not only what I send to staff, because I know time is limited, but also I know as parents, time is limited as well. So really want, my goal is really to send no more than one a week. And uh, I send the BC updates on Sunday evenings, or in this case, it was Monday evenings, just a snapshot and an overview of the week. So if you only read one of my emails a week, uh, I hope it's only one, but um, please take a look at that one. It's got an overview of the week, some important information. It's really a go-to place for, for information regarding what's going on at BC. Um, try to keep it to one a week because I know everyone's email inbox is, is full. But before I move on to not emptying your email inbox, you should also be getting one from each one of your son or daughter's teachers uh, a week at a glance. And here's, here's screenshots. Uh, these are from my son, my Ma son Matthews. Teachers sent out them and I get them in my in email inbox as well. But they are providing an overview of the week as well, really the learning targets and when the big stuff is. Now, there's some teachers that will get to the, you know, the thousand foot view. Some will keep it at the 20,000 foot view of just when the tests are, learning targets, things of that nature. But that's really a good opportunity for you as parents um, to see what's going on in your son or daughter's class. I know we all have access to Canvas and I know kids and teachers are in Canvas every day, every block. Um, but even as principal, I can tell you, I don't think I've ever gone into my son or my son's um, Canvas pages for his classes. As principal, I haven't even done that. So what we, we have decided that uh, this is an opportunity for us to communicate easily uh, with, with uh, staff or with, with parents. Don't want to overwhelm parents, but also don't want to overwhelm teachers in terms of creating things. So these, a lot of the things that they're sending out are exactly what they are sharing with the students. But look for those at the beginning of the week as well. Uh, here's an overview of the big dates. Don't feel like you need to write those down. I've already put this link in the, the updates uh, that I sent out a couple nights ago. I, I sent uh, or I hyperlinked them into the week. Uh, but this is the big stuff. Uh, we've got the professional development days, school dances, parent-teacher conferences. Parent-teacher conferences, again, we are gonna use Meet the Teacher um, and we're gonna use it virtually. 
Uh, we've, we've used that the last couple of years. It's really been a great benefit for parents, great benefit for teachers as well. Uh, makes it very, very easy to connect with the teacher. You have a five minute window uh, and that information will be coming out um, in, in just a couple more weeks. AP exams, ACT for juniors. When your son or daughters are juniors, they'll be taking the ACT here. Will either be at the end of February, early March. This year for our juniors, it's uh, March 8th. Uh, freshmen and sophomores this year will be taking the Aspire. Uh, that window, <clears throat> the window is about a, or is a month long. We haven't decided exactly when we're going to have the kids take it, but that's just as an FYI. And uh, graduation ceremony. Uh, uh, it's something that, uh, you know, you're sitting there thinking, oh, that's a long time away. And yeah, it is. But I can tell you, just as a parent that said goodbye to, to a senior, uh, it goes incredibly, incredibly quick. Uh, but uh, we'll be back at Brook East this year on Sunday, June 12th. Winter Sports Info Night. Uh, we are fully up and running with our fall sports. Um, we've got the volleyball going on tonight. I mean, there's there's never a night if we... We decided to, to have a night where there's nothing going on at BC. I, maybe we would do it Sunday nights uh, because this building never sleeps in terms of how much use we get out of it. It's a fantastic facility and the kids are always here, which is the way we want it. And Winter Sports Info Night is coming up. That is on October 11th. That is a PD day. So we don't have school during that day, uh, but we'll have a Winter Sports Info Night right in here at seven o'clock. Uh, Mr. Kurth will go through the, the overall um, information for the athletic department, uh, but then each coach will have a breakout session. So you'll talk with each coach. They'll talk about the, the tryout procedures and anything that's specific just to that. So that'll be an hour. That'll be something that you'll want to have on your calendar as well, but that's Winter Sports Info Night uh, just, just a month away. I'm going to turn it over to Carolyn Hahn. She's going to talk a little bit about attendance. Thank you. Um, so quickly, just want to touch on attendance. Um, every day, every day on time is really what we ask of students here at BC, um, not only for success academically, but also for their well-being um, and to really foster that sense of belonging here at BC. We know that attendance is important for a lot of reasons, and we always hold students accountable for their attendance. Um, reporting in absence has never been easier. There is an email address up on the screen, bchsattendance at elmbrookschools.org, where you can just simply send an email saying, my child will be out of school today. Um, or you can always call and leave a message so that we know where your son or daughter is that day. Um, it's always helpful to have a medical note when that applies. Um, and then we do ask that you monitor attendance regularly by logging into Infinite Campus. So just to reiterate, attendance does absolutely matter. Um, we want to know that our students are safe, that they are successful, and we can do that through attendance. And with that, I will pass it over to Mr. Dominic Bauer to touch on scheduling. So I drew the short straw tonight. I'm going to talk about something that's probably furthest from all of your minds, which is scheduling for next school year. And it may seem kind of weird that we're even talking about this tonight, but this is something that is a, a really long process that is already in the works. In fact, you could go home tonight after this meeting and log into Infinite Campus and go through the academic planner with your son or daughter and really plan out their entire next four years of what classes they would like to take here. And at some point, it does become really important to do that because collectively, uh, myself, Ms. Hahn, Mr. Gritzmacher gets involved at times, and our four counselors, who you will hear from, um, really work early and often with students to make sure that they're maximizing their opportunities and their experience here at Brookfield Central. So um, just wanted to remind everybody that it is already open and available to start doing that for next school year and that there will be a number of communications coming out in, in the next few months leading up to the academic planner ultimately closing. And at that point, the course requests that your son or daughter put in will be locked and will determine the schedule for next school year. And at that point, it's really difficult to get schedule changes. 
So please do over the course of the next five, six months, take some time to really have that conversation to make sure that what they put in their academic planner is what they really want on their schedule. Okay, good to see everybody. That's all I got. Thanks, Tom. Uh, we're very fortunate at BC to have three tremendous parent groups. We got PTO, Booster Club, and Applause. Uh, my it's my pleasure to introduce Beth Coomer um, as representing the PTO. Beth. Thank you. Hello, freshmen and some new families out there. I hope you all have a good start to the school year. My name is Beth Coomer, and I'm a member of BC's PTO. The PTO supports and funds a variety of events and programs, and I'm here to encourage you to join PTO and get involved with our group. A lot of parents think when they get to the high school, they don't have to join the PTO because their kids are independent, and they're doing everything on their own, and hopefully that's true as well, but we need parent support too. Um, we want to make this a really nice community for all of the teachers, the staff, and the students. Prior to school starting last week, the PTO hosted a uh, welcome breakfast for the teachers and staff. So hospitality events are one way that we stay connected. Um, we also fund mini grants for teachers to help fund items for their classrooms. And as your students get older, we help with post-prom activities and senior send-off activities. Our meetings are the second Tuesday of the month. So next Tuesday on the 14th, we're gonna meet at 9.30 in the Black Box Theater. And everyone is welcome. If you can't make it to meetings, that's totally fine. We have a web page where you can find our minutes from our meetings and other ways you can volunteer. So to find that, you go to the Brookfield Central website, click under Families, and then you'll see the BC PTO webpage. Um, and that's also where you can pay for your membership. It's only $25. The easier way to pay for a membership is to go to Infinite Campus and go under the School Store tab and click on Shop, I think. And then you'll see the PTO tab, the Applause, and the Booster Clubs. You can pay for all your support student groups at once, which is great. Um, so I encourage you to do that. We really would love to have your support. And on that note, I will introduce John Schnabel, president of our Booster Club. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is John Schnabel. I'm the president of the Brookfield Central Booster Club. And our mission is to financially support the unfunded or underfunded needs of BC athletics and band. Um, our support has, includes such things as new scoreboards, scholarships, equipment for training room, team gear, field repair. Those are just some examples of things over the years that we've financially supported as the Booster Club. How do we raise some of this money? Well, there's really four ways, four main ways. The first is memberships. Um, we have membership levels that start at $40 and go all the way to $200. You can get those memberships through the school store and Infinite Campus. We also have a link to our membership form on the BC Athletics page. We also do concessions. Um, we are part of the concession group where we work with the teams in order to do for concessions for all of, or many of the sports that happen here at Brookfield Central. We have an annual golf outing each year in August, next year, August 14th, where we raise funds and we do a drive for your school event with Soren's Ford at least once a year where we can raise money for the booster club and sports of your choice. How can you help? Become a member of Booster Club, help with concessions for the sports when they're doing those concessions, participate in the events that we have, like the Drive for Your School event and the golf outing, as well as other volunteer opportunities that we do have. And you can feel free to contact me at the email on the screen if you do have questions about those. We do have monthly meetings, which are the second Monday of every month in the library from seven to eight o'clock. So once again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me uh, to send me an email at the email above. Now let me introduce Sarah Field from Applause. Um, I'm Tara Field, and yes, I'm here to tell you about Applause, which is Brookfield Central's Fine Arts Booster Club. We support the band, choir orchestra, musical theater, dramatic theater, and the visual arts. Uh, since 2017, we've given over, over $53,000 in gifts to the fine arts at Brookfield Central. A few examples are a synthesizer for the band, 
seating for the black box theater, a portable keyboard for choir, props for the theater, speakers for the orchestra, iPads and Apple pencils for visual arts, and we give senior scholarships each year. Last year we gave three scholarships for a total of $2,500. Um, so we encourage you to join applause. We have our first meeting next Tuesday at 6.30 in the launch space in the library, and I will be at the table outside if you want some more information. Thank you. Thank you, Beth, uh, John, and Sarah. So our last, uh, our, my last part of this is to talk about our goals. Uh, oftentimes students and maybe parents wonder as well, like what do we do on PD days? What is, what is our instructional driving force? And um, something that we, we always do is certainly planning in the summer. And traditionally we would look at just one year, uh, but, but this past, past school year, we decided to do a three-year plan. And this is gonna be our focus, not only this year, but for the next two school years. First, a PLC. Now that might not mean a whole lot to, to people in this room, but a PLC is a professional learning committee, which each teacher is a part of, where they have a support system, not only to help them with things that are going on in their classroom, but also most importantly, to, to help them with lesson design, and that's number two. The lessons that teachers create are some of the most important work that they do on a daily basis. It's also the most difficult work that they do. In a perfect world, every kid would come into the classroom at the same reading level, the same maturity level, the list goes on and on. You know, as parents, we know my, my three boys, they're, they're all three different people. Just like when 25 or 26 kids walk into an English 9 classroom, they're all different. And our goal is to meet the needs of every kid that walks into that classroom. And part of that goal is that kids are gonna read, write, and collaborate every day in every class. I'm gonna say that again, they're gonna read, write, and collaborate every day in every class. We know those are the three things, are the most important thing that we can do for them here. As they get out into the world after BC, those are the three skills that all employers want. Those are the skills that they need to have not only to, to run a home, but also to have a successful job in life. Lancer block and Lancer link. That is our 34 minute period in between blocks two and or excuse me, blocks one and two. Lancer block is devoted for students and staff to select kids to come to their class that they need to make up something, that they need additional support. That is Monday through Thursday. We wanna make sure kids are going to the right class. If they are behind in geometry, they shouldn't be in their social studies class. So that is something that we're really gonna focus on uh, this year that kids are using that time for the best of their uh, abilities. And also Lancer Link. Lancer Link is something that we have on Friday. It's uh, when many of us were in school, we called it homeroom, but it's the time for we, the, the makeup of Lancer Link is there's four freshmen, four sophomores, four juniors, and four seniors. So the, the student will have that Lancer Link in their four years here. And as the senior class moves out, we bring a freshman class in. It's a time to build community within a classroom. It's time for younger kids to learn from older kids. It's time for people to meet people that they normally wouldn't. You know, as, as humans, we kind of get into our, our little bubble and it's okay to, to burst that bubble and be a little uncomfortable and learn from other people as well. It's also a goal of that Lancer Link teacher to be someone that is a trusted adult. We know that every student needs to have at least one trusted adult, an adult that they can come to at school and they know that that's a person that they can go talk to about anything. And that's what Lancer Link is about and I'm really excited about what we're doing this school year. And then lastly, and it's our most important work, you know, as a parent, we want our kids to come to school, you know, you know, even my boys will kind of grumble when they have school, I get it, I get it. I might've done that when I was in school as well, but I'm not sure. But we know that the most important thing is, you know, we, you know, the old, what'd you learn in school today? But, but really we wanna know, did you have fun? Did you, did you talk to someone? Did you have someone to sit by and lunch? Do you feel like BC is your home? And that to me is the most important thing. You know, we have 1,212 students here at BC and it's our goal to have first and foremost, the right academic program for that student. Now keep in mind, we might have some students that are in Calc 3, which when you look at those textbooks, I don't even know what that stuff is on that page, but we have kids doing that. We have some kids that are in algebra and everything in between. We have kids that are reading college level text. We have some kids that maybe struggle to read. 
and the list goes on and on. And it's our job to have a spot for every kid that walks in the store academically. It's also our job to have a spot for every kid in a club that they want to be in. We have about 65 clubs here at BC, and all clubs are student driven. It's not that we sit around thinking, hey, let's think of clubs for kids to do. Because we know that, that just because we think it's a good idea, believe it or not, sometimes students don't think it's a good idea. I don't know if that's ever happened at your house, but it happens at mine. So they are student driven clubs that they can provide them, provide opportunities for themselves. It's also an opportunity for kids to have leadership. The amount of opportunities that kids have to lead real change to make BC a better place here is list goes on and on. Our student council, we don't have elections for student council. Back in the day, those were big things. Now, if you wanna be on the student council, you're on the student council and you can come to those meetings. And certainly they plan dances and things like that. And those are important but they plan other things that truly change the culture and what we do here at BC. And in order to, to have that belonging, we need to make sure those places, pieces are in place. But also the most important thing is that kids come in with, from different backgrounds, different religions, different races, the list goes on and on that we can list that we, we are different. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing, that every kid that walks in here is respected and cared for. And we know if we have those pieces in place, that kids will feel like BC is their home. And that's what our number one priority is to make sure that kids, when they walk in here, they know this is their place to be and it's gonna be four great years. It will be four great years. It's gonna be four quick years. And I know there's a lot of parents out there that I've seen here in, in my time here that have been through the freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and it does go quickly. Um, but we will be here to take care of your kids. We know that that is the most important thing in your world. This is the most important thing in my world and we're always here for you. You know, I send out uh, my, my phone number and emails. <clears throat> Feel free to give me a text. And if you wanna call, um, text me and I'll, I'll give you a call back. We're here for you. And i um, like to once again, welcome you to BC. And I'm gonna turn it over to our great student services staff and uh, Leah Devine, come on up Leah. She is uh, the counselor for A through F. You know, that's, yeah. but, but you'll get it here. But uh, um, Leah Devine, let's give her a hand. Hi everyone. How exciting to see everyone together. Um, I had like kind of, it's, this is embarrassing, but I had like tears welling up in my eyes when everyone was coming in. It just is so nice to see everyone back again. I know the other counselors would echo this as well. It's so nice to see our students um, and get to work with them face to face again. So like Mr. Gritzmacher said, I'm Leah Devine. So I'm the school counselor for students with last names A through F. Um, the next counselor in the alphabet is Mrs. Primo. Um, she's the counselor for students with last names G through LE. She will be going on maternity leave here very quickly. Um, and so the substitute that we have for her is Mrs. Jansen. Mrs. Jansen is coming to us from Cedarburg. Um, she's wonderful. So any students who are last names G through LE will have Mrs. Jansen through December. Um, and then we also have Ms. Lemke. She is the school counselor with students' last names L-I through R-I. And then Mr. Grow is over there as well. Um, end of the alphabet, students with last names R-O through Z. Um, you'll also see right under our names on this slide that we have our Calendly link. So this is how students can make appointments with us um, if they wanna meet with us about a schedule change or they're concerned about something, really anything that they wanna talk to us about, they can use our Calendly link and pick a day and time that will work for them. We also have Ms. O.B. She is our intern. She works primarily with Ms. Lemke, um, but she helps all of us with various projects. So um, she may be working with your student giving presentations similar to the one that I'm giving now. Um, the rest of our student services team as well. The first person on the slide is Ms. Patricia. So she is our school psychologist. Her calendar link is on this slide as well if your child would like to make an appointment with her. Um, then we have Ms. Ruby who also worked at Wisconsin Hills, so she might look familiar to some of you um, who is our school social worker. And then Mrs. Farley, who's our director of college career and life. So if your child has any specific career or college questions, they can always reach out to Ms. Farley as well. Ms. Ferschel is our wonderful admin assistant. So right when you walk into student services, which is right across the hallway down this way from the library. Um, so she'll be the first bright smiling face that you'll see when you come in. Um, so yeah, Mrs. Ferschel. And now I will hand it over to Ms. Lemke. Yeah. 
Hey, good evening, everybody. Really good to see you. I would echo what Mrs. Devine said. It's nice to be in the presence of friendly faces again. Um, so Ms. Uh, Devine already sort of got at the idea that we do operate as much as we can on appointments. We wanna make sure we have the opportunity to see as many kids as we can in any given day. Um, and so a big thing for students tonight to know and families as well is that to set an appointment, you can use those Calendly links or you can see Ms. Herschel um, now that we're back in person and, and everyone's here, which is great. Um, then your, your child, or if you are the, the student, you'll get you know a 15 or a 30 minute appointment, depending on what you need. Um, we'll connect together and sometimes there's a follow up from there. Um, the big thing to know students logistically is we have gone completely away from paper passes. Um, and so when you make that appointment, watch for a confirmation email to come into your inbox. That will be your pass from class. So students, then you can show your teacher. Um, I saw Mr. Hips in the room here somewhere. He'd be like, hey, Mr. Hip, I have an appointment with my counselor. I just need to step out for a little bit. Um, you'll head on down. And again, student services is right across from the library. And then Ms. Virgil can help you find us in our offices, depending on who you have. The, you know, it's always good practice, obviously, to let your teacher know in advance if you can, but either way, that's your best protocol. Keeping in mind, as much as we want to operate on appointments, part of our um, role and responsibility is also to be there when there are moments of crisis or urgency. Um, so we always say if it's a safety concern, we want you to come down right away. Don't send an email. Please don't send an email because you don't, we don't know what we're doing sometimes in a full day. We get caught up and sometimes don't get back to emails for a long time. So if it's a student safety concern where you're worried that somebody might be in danger or hurt themselves or hurt someone else, let your teacher know that it's something urgent. Come down and tell someone in person right away. Um, if it's a different kind of urgency where, you know, sometimes people get bad news in the middle of the day, find out, you know, someone's been in an accident or have an unexpected breakup with a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend. We know things happen. Emotions get high. Um, that would also be an urgent situation that you're more than welcome to come down to student services. Let us know what's going on. And if, if your counselor can't see you in that moment, one of us will step up and we'll sit with you and, and we'll work together to navigate through that situation. Um, for everyone, students and families, a couple great resources that I would encourage you to check out. One is the Brookfield Central Student Services webpage. Tons of links are there. We get questions throughout the four years about whether it be ACT prep, um, a form for the PE credit option, um, upcoming dates and information. A lot of that is on our student services website. We also try hard to keep our Twitter updated. So if you want to follow us at counseling underscore BCHS, we will send out updates and things like that as we go, um, including sometimes just highlighting other activities that are going on in the building. You can, it's also a really quick and easy way to get to our Calendly links as well as our email addresses. So, okay, families, how many of you in here do have an upperclassman who's already gone through BC? Okay, yep, we've got, we've got some returning victims here, excellent. Um, so if you've been here before in the last four years, you've done this thought exercise, but it was with a different one of your children. Um, ninth graders, how many of you have been in ninth grade at, nope, you haven't, right. So this is the first time you get to do this, awesome. So I'm gonna have you right now in families, um, or if you happen to be the lone representative of your family tonight, silent reflect, um, turn and talk with your family. When you think of this particular ninth grader, what will success look like after high school for this, this kid, this one of your kids? All right, turn and talk.
All right, we're gonna come back together here in about 15 seconds. So oh, as much as I didn't walk around this time in past years when we've done this or in smaller groups when we've had these conversations, some of the themes are, my child will be successful if they're happy. My child will be successful if they're connected with their family, with their sometimes culture, sometimes their religion or their church. My child will be successful if they are um, working towards or in a, a, a job or career that they feel fulfilled by, that they feel like is, is something that matches and fits with them well. Um, a lot of people talk about family and creating their own family and thinking about what does that look like in the future and how does that bring my family now together with that future family. A lot of different themes will come up, um, but just coming back and connecting back to what Mr. Gritzmacher said, a little bit earlier about every student having their place here at BC. We do that because we want to help make sure that every student finds their right place out of BC. Every student, every individual is a little bit different. And if we compared side by side those descriptions of success, there are themes, but there are probably no two students that would define success and really get into the nitty gritty exactly the same because every one of you has different likes, different talents, different strengths different ways you like to spend your time. And so starting in ninth grade, we really try to emphasize that as part of our academic and career planning process that's supported by the school counselors as well as across the building. Um, so now I'm giving you homework. Not only did I make you do work in class, but now you're going home to do some homework. At some point this week, I want you to have a conversation that starts to look at that future. Um, and instead of asking that common, you know, maybe childhood question, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want you to start thinking for this particular young person. So for you guys, ninth graders, not what do you want to be, but what do you want to do when you grow up? Think about it more as verbs, more as the actions, more as the ways you want to spend your time. Um, I tell the anecdote all the time about my former student, Courtney, who was convinced that she wanted to be um, a surgeon for years emails me from college in her first anatomy lab and is like, I do not want to be a surgeon, <laughs> right? Because what do surgeons do? They're literally cutting into bodies. Um, now, she's actually a doctor, but I think where she's at like Duke doing some PhD program at this point. So she's still in medicine, but she's not a surgeon. So that's why I, I highlight this for you. Start getting those experiences. We'll talk about that through these four years, but think verbs, think how do I really wanna spend my time, not just like what's that title I want or what do I think it might be. Um, start those conversations now. One way to kind of harken back to that is for those of you who had been students at Wisconsin Hills, you did academic and career planning lessons with regularity. And one of the tools that you can use is Zello. Those of you who are like me and old enough to remember what an encyclopedia is, this is kind of like the encyclopedia of opportunities. I wouldn't go to it as like my be all end all source, but you can definitely do some great scanning, looking, digging into opportunities that are out there um, and get some of those verbs, especially if you're struggling. If that student is saying, hmm, well, I think I want to be a veterinarian and you don't really know how to describe those verbs and what they do, Zello can be a great way to get that started. Parents, um, this year it was a little bit of a tough rollout as we were working with Zello, but there is a way this year for you guys to get your own access. In previous years, we'd always said just buddy up with your student and that's still a great way to go. That breeds conversation anyway. But if you want your own access, um, this would be a great time for cell phones. If you wanna take a snap real quick of that um, scan, uh, you can QR code it hold up your phone if you want that, and then we just need you to fill out that form. We'll resend you an invitation email and get you set up if that's something that you want. Otherwise, as Mr. Gritzmacher said, this is linked for you as well. So I'll hang on here for a second. This is the next slide you, Mr. Grow? Yeah, I think, I think I'm introducing Mr. Grow, so I'll leave this up while we transition. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm so excited to have you here, and I'm so excited not to be in a Zoom meeting. Um, I get the opportunity to talk about graduation requirements, and I want to start it out this way. Students, I want you just to just take 10 seconds in your mind. You don't have to tell anybody anything. What do you need to do to graduate from Brookfield Central? 
Did you hear that pause? And there's a reason for there's a pause. Because the number one person most responsible to make sure you're on track to graduate is you. And there's lots of opportunities and help with that. So as your counselors, we are that backup set of eyes. We do that second check. But as you know with different things, if you're writing a paper, right, you want somebody to proofread it. In carpentry, you measure twice, you cut once. So it helps if you have multiple people looking to make sure there's not a mistake. And my guess is all your parents are here and all your parents are there to help you with that too. So it's kind of step into and take a look at our graduation requirements. All our graduation requirements are the requirements, all the minimal requirements for every single two and four year college. Everything from WCTT technical school to Harvard. As we look at these, there's two things I really want to point out. One, you need at least 24 credits to graduate. So that means that really you could take a study hall every single term, all four years, and still get 24 credits. The other thing I want to point out is if you look from English to financial literacy, those are the graduation specific classes. You need 24 credits and those specific classes. Now, I'm going to talk about some common questions that I wrote out. So within this first couple weeks of school, it wasn't even that, I got all these different questions about this and I thought this is a great opportunity to talk about this. I'll leave out Mr. Grove. Do I need to count electives? The reality is no. If you have at least 24 credits and you have everything from English to financial literacy, you have every single elective that you need. Do I only need three years of math to graduate? Yes. However, if you look at this, many colleges require for different subjects more. So our math or science and social studies, you can see that they're looking at three or four. I haven't run across a college that says, don't take math your senior year. What is fine and practical arts? So to clarify, Mr. Bauer was talking about the academic planner. When you go in there and you start putting things in, you need one credit of fine or practical arts in your four years to be able to graduate. Fine arts are art courses, music courses, practical arts are business classes, computer classes, applied tech classes, family and consumer educations, any combination of that. When is the best time to take personal finance? And personal finance falls under financial literacy? Typically, junior year. Why? It tends to be the most relevant. You're looking at budgeting, you're looking at FAFSA, you're looking at preparing for college, and when is a good time to do that? Junior year. Do I need a world language to graduate? No, you do not. World language is awesome. However, I'll tell you this, if you're thinking of going into any liberal arts education, most colleges will recommend and some require at least two years of a single consecutive language. So now we got our graduation requirements. The state of Wisconsin said there's an additional graduation requirement. It's called the Wisconsin State Civics Exam. It's a hundred question test divided up into four modules. Students could go into Canvas and take it. You could take it today. You could take it tonight. All you need is 65 points to pass that test. And that's the only thing. If I get 100, I get 65, I get a nice little P on my transcript that said I passed this test. Now, you're ready for the kicker? Here's the big kicker. You can take this test as many times as you need until you pass. So I am saying pretty likely everybody's got a 99.9% .9 chance of successfully passing this test. So when we talked about like graduation checking and stuff, there's actually a tool in Infinite Campus to help you. So they changed how to do it. So I'm gonna walk through how to do it this year. So you log into Infinite Campus and you click on documents. When you click on documents, there's a little thing on the bottom that says academic plan progress report. That's based on the academic planner Mr. Bauer talked about. So if you put in all your courses for four years and you pull this up and it doesn't look right, you know you're missing some stuff. So once you click that, you come to a screen that looks like this. You don't have to do anything with the top. You just go down to that third part and click generate report. 
Oh, this is a report for one of our seniors. You can see everything is green. That means go. The student's on track to graduate. Not only do they have enough credits, not only do they have all the graduation specific courses, but you can even see at the bottom that they met the requirements for this Wisconsin State Civics exam. Transcript. This is the document everybody is vying for. And one of the things I want to tell you about it, and then I'll tell you some things that are not about it. So what a transcript really is, is all your courses and grades throughout your whole year. So we're coming to end of term one. At the end of term one, your transcript's gonna be updated. All your courses, all your grades, all your credits are gonna go onto this transcript. Every single term, the transcript gets updated for an alternating day course. Every semester, it gets updated. You'll have something right at the top called the grade point average. And the grade point average really is everything all added up divided by everything to get the average of everything that you did. So if you're looking at some post-secondary direction, they're gonna be looking at your transcript. One of the first things they'll be looking at is, what is your grade point average? How are you doing overall? And then they're gonna go through and look at how are you challenging yourself with your coursework. And the last thing that it has is all the credits earned. That's what a transcript is. I'm gonna tell you what a transcript isn't because I get that question a lot. No study halls go on the transcript. Attendance doesn't go on the transcript. Activities don't go on the transcript and behavior does not go on a transcript. A transcript is solely your academic profile. And that is what used post-secondary institutions will use to kind of as one of their gauge points. Why do we need it? Well, the first thing we need it for is graduating. And I can't imagine everybody in the room does not want to see that point walking across that stage, shaking Mr. Gritzmacher's hand. That's an awesome experience. The other thing you need it for is post-secondary directions. Now, it's not just college, military, jobs, apprenticeships. They want to make sure that you have the documentation you need to be able to graduate. So basically what this does is it takes us all the way around back to that first thing. Do I have all my requirements to be able to graduate? Now, the other thing that's coming up is scheduling. And Mr. Bauer did a really great job talking about all the details that go into schedules. So here are some of the things that you're able to do once the schedule comes out. Students have up to five days from the start of a term to drop down from an honors class to a regular class, provided there's a seat open in that regular class. Students have up to three weeks once a term starts to drop a class for a study hall provided they don't have a study hall in their schedule. And I've talked to a bunch of students, they got some pretty heavy course loads. Sometimes things are a little bit unbalanced. You get more of the course stuff on one side, they're dropping for the study hall. Will the study hall hurt you? No. Does the study hall show on the transcript? No. A study hall is your opportunity to really focus on those other classes and build up that academic profile. Now the last one is really important. Once a term starts, you're not able to add a class. All these schedule changes are there for a reason, and all these have a schedule change form. So I just had a student, uh, right before we started these presentations, stop in student services, Mr. Girl, I need the schedule change form. Gave him the form, he's gonna take it home, take his parents to sign it, his teacher to sign it, and then he can drop his class for his study hall. Mr. Gritzmacher mentioned about ACT Aspire. Juniors, you're going to take a test called the ACT. That'll typically be sometime in the early spring of your junior year. The ACT is a test that colleges can use as part of their criteria for admissions. One of the big questions we get is how can students practice for this? How can they prepare for this? This is one of those opportunities. ACT Spire is a computerized practice. It mirrors exactly the ACT. And then afterwards, it gives you score reports and you probably got those in the mail uh, next year when you're done taking the test. All our sophomores and juniors would have gotten those score reports this year. These score reports will tell you what you need to know. What do I need to work on? What am I struggling with? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses with this? It is free. You do not need to register. You are automatically registered for this test. So what's gonna happen is in the spring, dates will be set, students will be notified, you'll be coming in, you'll be taking the ACT test, and then sometime the start of next year, you'll be getting those score reports so you can see how you're doing with those tests. Okay, now I'm gonna pass it back to Mrs. Devine. 
All right, that was a lot of really, really great information. Um, a lot of information about classes, about scheduling, about clubs and activities. Um, I want to talk to you all now about synthesizing that information, taking it in, soaking it in, letting it marinate for a little bit, and then thinking about how do I balance all of these things? How do I balance the academics? And then how do I balance, as students, your own mental health, your own well-being? Um, because I know as a counselor, some students get really, really excited and they want to do all of these activities and take all of these classes, and that's great. Um, but what I stress to them and what the other counselors stress to them as well is that balance is so important. Um, you really have to think about what does balance look like for me? Because like Mr. Gritzmacher was talking about at the beginning, every student is different. Um, so balance might look different for every student. Balance might look like um, a study hall every term for one student, because maybe their classes, they feel very overwhelming to them. And that's okay. And that's balance. Um, and balance might look different to other kids. But what I want to tell you all, speaking to you students directly, take time to be a kid still. Um, you're still a kid. Um, high school is a really great time to, like I said, get involved in these activities, take classes that you're interested in, but think about balancing that, um, balancing the academic and the mental health side of things too. Um, so tips for ninth graders. These are all tips that we've generated um, as student services professionals, kind of over the years, a um, little cheat sheet for you ninth graders. So first, please advocate for yourself. Um, if you don't if you don't know something in class, please ask. And for some students, that might be intimidating, you know, going up to a teacher that you may have only met once or haven't talked to in person at all. And that's okay, you can send an email. Um, so students, if you have a question, find that teacher's email, send them a quick email, say, I have a question about this um, that you talked about in class, I'm not really sure where to start with it. They will get back to you. Um, so yeah, advocating. Also scheduling your Lancer blocks. Um, like what was talked about at the beginning as well, Lancer Block is a great time to collaborate with teachers and get questions answered and you do that right in your efficiency. So selecting a specific teacher that you want to see each day of the week during Lancer Block um, if you have questions for a specific teacher. Also, again, reiterating like what Mr. Bro said, watch your graduation requirements. You can do that right in IC. Um, getting involved, we have over 60 clubs and activities um, like Mr. Gritzmacher talked about at the beginning of our presentation tonight, please take time to look those activities over, see if there's anything that you're interested in, because like we said as well, they're all student generated. Um, so they're easily found right on the website. They're also linked right in this slide deck here. Also start building your resume. So that might look like getting involved in activities, sports, um, maybe doing some volunteering. Um, we as counselors can help you build your resume. So maybe you're like, I don't even know what a resume looks like. We can help you with that. Um, resume will be super helpful when you start to apply to jobs maybe um, as you get further along in high school. And also if you choose to apply to college, you'll be using all of the information on your resume and essentially uploading that right to your college application. So the sooner you can get started on it, the better. Um, again, reiterating what Ms. Lumpke said, start thinking about those careers, have those conversations as a family. Um, make sure you're checking Infinite Campus and Canvas, and then also saving for your future. Um, so we might talk about saving for your future in terms of saving money, um, but we also want to encourage students to be a consumer of their education. So what that means is here at BC, we offer so, I don't even know an exact number, but so many courses um, where students can earn college credit for those courses and taking those classes in high school will be free and then you know you save that money going to college so being a consumer of your education so whether that looks like taking a cap class um, like spanish five let's say your junior or senior year cap class um, translates to college credit to uw oshkosh that might look like i'm um, taking an ap class and earning a, um, a qualifying score on your ap exam um, so many many activities that we will talk with your sons and daughters about as they progress through high school so then tips for parents as well. Um, coming into high school, it might be hard, but we start to loosen the reins a little bit and kind of let our, um, our child, our student go. And they, they will be okay. There's so many supports here for them. Um, but this also means letting your child speak first um, or 
maybe that looks like you have a concern in a class and you feel like, oh, I, I don't know, I, I think I want to email the teacher on my, on my child's behalf. Maybe have a conversation with them and allow them to um, write the email. Maybe you craft it together, but it comes from your child's email. So that might look like slowly but surely um, letting them use their voice first. And then encourage them to get involved, but still monitor, again, talking about balance, making sure you know your, your child best, making sure that balance is still there, they aren't over uh, overexerting themselves. And again, have those conversations as a family too. Um, please also be um, checking Infinite Campus. Grades are posted um, all the time. Teachers are really great about staying on top of those. So those will always be updated at Infinite Campus as well as attendance. Um, and then checking your email as well. So teachers will email out to parents important information about their class that you will need to know. Um, so please be sure to be monitoring your email. And like I feel like I said a thousand times already, have those conversations at home about future careers. Ms. Lumpy talked about it as well. Um, using Zello, that's such a great resource and a lot of these students are already familiar with it through Wisconsin Hills. And so students, how can you get help? So I already mentioned asking in class. If you don't feel comfortable asking face-to-face, -face, send an email. Um, that's probably the least threatening way to do that and an easy way to um, start to uh, form that relationship with your teacher. Um, like I said, meeting with them during Lancer Block as well. Very easy to schedule an efficiency. You're assigned right to their room and then you're right there to have that conversation with them. We will be offering after school tutoring in the library, I believe, through NHS. Um, so students, if you have questions about this, or parents, um, our NHS tutoring co coordinator, he's one of our NHS exec board members, um, Andrew Rossi, his information is up on the screen. Um, but students will be getting information about NHS tutoring shortly once it's up and running, which should be within the next few weeks. Um, and please remember that we're all here to help support you, um, not only you as students, but also parents. If you have any questions at all, all of us up here, all of us who have presented us for this evening are more than happy to help and assist you. Um, we know that there's questions that come up all the time and yeah, we would love to work with you. So a couple upcoming dates. So September 24th, three week grades are available. These grades do not go on the transcript. Um, they are just kind of a snapshot of where your child is at, at three week grades. Um, so September 24th, and then September 6th, uh, parent-teacher conferences, like Mr. Gritzmacher mentioned, we will do that through Meet the Teacher. October 15th, ooh, six week grades are available. Again, not on the transcript, another snapshot of where they are at at six weeks. Um, those might be grades to look at if you're concerned of, um, about a grade at six week marks. We're getting closer and closer to the end of the term. Um, so maybe um, have those conversations about grades if you're concerned about them. And then November 5th is the end of term one. And then the first term AP exam signed up. So freshmen, if any of you are in an AP class during first term, um, that would be your AP exam sign up and payment due date for your AP exam. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being so attentive. I appreciate it. Um, we'll be up here.